they can see the need, we all see the need. Giving veterans a helping hand, more in a program in Anoka County that's a lifeline for those who've served. Plus, local dignitaries gather to celebrate the newest dining experience in the North Metro, but first... The opportunities available to our students are quite unique. A new home for a District 11 program that helps older, at-risk students finish high school. That top CTN News is Friday, November 6, 2015. Thanks for joining us. Students who fail to graduate high school on time often struggle to earn their diploma, if ever. What they usually need is a second chance, and that's where the Anoka Hennepin Technical High School comes in. The school, which used to be known as Crossroads West, is now located inside the Anoka Technical College and serves 18 to 21 year olds. CTN Steve Antis was at this week's grand opening celebration. It's been amazing, beyond what any of us thought it was going to be. Students listened as Principal Nancy Shavi addressed a crowd of school board members, public officials, and other supporters who came to celebrate the senior campus of the new Anoka Hennepin Technical High School. The goal is to complete high school and get on that career track. That's what we're here for. Set on the west end of the Anoka Technical College, students here focus on college and beyond while they work toward their high school diploma. The options that we have at Anoka Tech can really help not only our uh, Anoka Hennepin Technical High School students, but all students get on a great path. I've overcame many obstacles while attending Anoka Technical High School. 19-year-old Lavelle Conway graduates next week. After that, he'll walk down the hall to start a surgical tech program with the college. I think it was my greatest decision to come here, and because I came here, I've learned many skills that I will be able to use in the future. The world they're going into is technology-based. Visitors toured the classrooms and labs available to students. There are some college classes they can take through the PSEO program where they can earn college credit. Students were just trying to reach that finish line of a high school diploma and then they weren't quite sure what they were going to do next. Here, they're midway through a program at the tech college when they finish high school. And the whole experience is nice. Like many students here, Adam Pang balances class time with work time. He credits his teachers for keeping him on track. You know, they're very flexible. Like, if I have something to do, they would understand and try to help work around my schedule. This is a track that they could actually do and be successful in. At the start of the school year, 100 students were enrolled in the Anoka Hennepin Technical High School, but that number quickly went up to 140 and continues to rise. If you'd like to learn more about the program, call the school at 763-576-7960 or log into District 11's website for more information. Stephen Karen? I see a lot of success stories coming out of that program. Thank Definitely. you, Steve. Thanks. All three incumbents up for re-election are returning to the Anoka Hennepin School Board. Both District 1 Representative Tom Heideman of Anoka and District 2 Representative Marcy Anderson of Blaine ran unopposed. In District 5, Nicole Hayes of Brooklyn Park defeated challenger Scott Simmons with about 78% of the vote. She was appointed to the school board back in February following the death of Scott Wenzel. All three candidates will serve a four-year term. A new survey shows more people think the quality of education in District 11 is improving, but there's still more work to be done. The residential study conducted by the Morris Leatherman Company showed 91% of respondents felt that quality of education was excellent or good compared to 81% four years ago. Asked what they liked most about the district, participants said good teachers. As for the most serious issues facing District 11, large class sizes and bullying. However, 74% of people who took the survey said they were aware of efforts to end bullying, a 10% increase from the previous year. Veterans Day, which is November 11th, is a chance for us to say thank you to the men and women who have served in the military. But a select group of volunteers are offering their appreciation every week by getting behind the wheel. CTN's Joe Nelson has more on the Rides for Veterans program and how you can help. That's what I wasn't working on Fridays, and after I retired, it's what it gives me a good, something worthwhile. Keep me occupied. For the past 12 years, Gerald Wegscheid of Columbia Heights has been on the road offering veterans and seniors a ride. I'm usually right around 20 to 30 trips per month. Gerald is just one of 55 who volunteer their time to the Anoka County MedLink program, offering veterans and people over 60 from the county transportation to their medical appointments. It's a very vital program for the folks that do use it, and it works great. Uh, it particularly serves our veterans because if we do take folks to the St. Cloud VA as well as the Minneapolis VA and as Ramsey and the Maplewood Clinic. 
Tim Kirchhoff, Transit Operations and Planning Supervisor for Anoka County, says veterans and seniors sign up and get a list of drivers from their area to call when they need a ride. Drivers made more than 6,000 trips last year and are reimbursed for mileage. It's rewarding. I think you, once you, you find out what you're doing, uh, if you provide one ride a month, you're, you're part of our services and you're part of the team. Gerald, a Vietnam War vet himself, says he's happy to help others. It makes a person feel really good that you're part of it. The enjoyment you see on their face, taking them to the to appointments and that, and there uh, too, and just having somebody to talk to. I'd love to see more of the counties get something like this going, and the people really, really appreciate it. That's that's the main thing. Yeah. In Anoka County, Joe Nelson, CTN News. Anoka County says there is a need for more drivers. To find out how to volunteer or how to get a ride, contact the transit office at 763-422-7087. The city is looking for residents interested in serving on several advisory commissions. Currently, there are openings on the Arts, Board of Adjustment and Appeals, Charter, Historical, Parks and Recreation, Planning, Safety, Sustainability, and the Civil Service Commission. You can apply online at coonrapidsmn.gov. You'll be asked to rank in order which commissions you wish to serve on. You'll also be asked to provide your work and civic experience, along with why you want to serve on an advisory commission. CenturyLink is moving forward with plans to add cable TV service in Coon Rapids. On Tuesday night, the City Council introduced an ordinance for CenturyLink's cable television franchise and ordered a public hearing for November 17th. The five-year franchise calls for the company's Prism TV service to be available in at least 15% of the city within the first two years and reach more areas of the city in the following years. They will also provide the city with five high-definition community channels. Coon Rapids full-time DWI officer will help keep our streets safe through at least 2016. This week, the City Council accepted the nearly $140,000 grant from the Minnesota Office of Traffic Safety for the next fiscal year. This year, Coon Rapids is one of eight departments in the state to get the four-year grant, which must be renewed annually to make sure the departments are reaching their goals. The grant provides each community with an officer solely devoted to keeping impaired drivers off the road. The first phase of a project to improve safety at the Anoka County Airport in Blaine is now complete. Crews recently wrapped up work on improvements to the airfield's guidance signs along, with the run along the runways and taxiways. New LED lights have been installed and more than 30 guidance signs have been replaced. A grant from the FAA helped pay for most of the project. Our users have been uh, enjoying that, uh, that the lighted taxiway, which is uh, a nice safety improvement now that the, the pilots at night uh, know exactly where the taxiway edge is and can follow their way down. And it's important because that we do have a fair amount of operations at night and they're going down to their hangars or to the FBO, the, the business that sells fuels. The second phase of the project involves the air traffic control tower built 20 years ago. All of the old electronics are being replaced with modern equipment, including voice recorders. Installation work will take place in December. The newest dining experience in the North Metro celebrated its grand opening this week. One, two, three. Yay! On Wednesday, the Metro North Chamber of Commerce helped cut the ribbon on the new Kendall's Tavern and Chop House at the Bunker Hills Golf Club. The neighborhood restaurant and bar is owned by the city but run by Morrissey Hospitality Companies. A new vendor was brought in after the Harvest Grill ran into financial difficulties and defaulted on its lease. But it's just really exciting to finally cut the ribbon and everyone know that we're here and that we're open and we're just excited to be a part of the community and to offer this really great food and really great service. Everything I've heard so far is very positive. Everybody loves the food, the, the service is fabulous, everybody here is, really makes them feel welcome and lets them know they want them to be here. The tavern style food is served for lunch and dinner daily. The Chop House menu is available after 4 p.m. Inspiration for the new name came from Kendall Bunker, a farmer and the original owner of the land at Bunker Hills. The newest tap room in the area opens this weekend in downtown Anoka. Two Coon Rapids natives converted a former winemaking shop and holistic healing center into a new craft brewery. 10K Brewing will have three to five beers on tap at any one time with a rotating selection. There will also be trivia and live entertainment. To start, the business will be open Wednesdays through Saturdays. Pretty cool. I bet you there'll be a lot of people there. It's actually a brother and sister. They grew up in Coon Rapids that opened that. So uh, good luck to them. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.